Hey there everyone, continue watching this video if you want more information on how to make and use beacons in Minecraft. We're going to go through all of the simple knowledge that you need for your game in order to actually utilize beacon to the, their fullest potential. Hi there everyone, welcome to another Minecraft tutorial here on the channel and within this video we're going to be talking about beacons as you can see and as you can see I am chilling with a wither right here which I've frozen in place and the reason why we have the wither here is because they are actually related to the beacons. Now first off in this video we're going to discuss how we actually make beacons in the first place. Now this is what a beacon looks like in the game. This is what the block looks like. It has an ambient sound when you're near it and when it's actually activated or when it's actually a valid beacon I should say it will create this uh, beam of light that goes right to the top of the world as you can see. Now in order to make a beacon you need to use uh, glass blocks, you need to use an obsidian base and you also need to use a nether star in order to actually craft one as you can see and that is the reason why we need to have the wither boss here. So um, each time you kill the wither boss in the game, I believe it's a 100% chance to get a never star when the wither boss dies. Now, that means if you want multiple beacons in your world, you need to kill the wither multiple times, which is a little unfortunate because the wither is, uh, <laughs> can be quite a troublesome boss at times unless you have a killing machine of some kind for the wither. But that is how you actually make the beacon in the first place. We're now going to go on to how you utilize them. How do you use them? And how do you make valid beacons? Now, as you can see here, I have five valid beacons that I have actually uh, constructed right here. Because you need to build a base for the beacon. And if the base is correct, it will then be a valid beacon that you can actually use. Now. The whole point or the whole point of actually crafting these beacon structures is that a beacon is kind of like a status effect beacon. So depending on the base of the beacon and how it's constructed, it will have a certain radius that it actually can apply effects to players. And depending on how, I guess, the tier or the type of base or beacon you've got, it will provide an effect to the player for a slightly longer amount of time. So as you can see here, uh, there are four different types of beacon. You've got a three block base beacon, you've got a five block, a seven block, and a nine block, okay? And to make a valid sort of beacon, you need to make what's sort of known as a pyramid structure in the game. So these two right here, are using a a three by three pyramid base. This one is a five by five pyramid base, and this is seven by seven, and this one is nine by nine. And there are five different materials that you can use to make these bases. The first being blocks of iron, and then you've got blocks of gold, blocks of diamond, blocks of emerald, and blocks of neverite. So by default, this makes this beacon, as a standalone beacon, the most expensive beacon you can make. Now, uh, that is because it's a 9x9 base and it's using the Neverite. And just to very quickly go over all the materials actually needed, if you want a free base beacon, you need to use 9 blocks, which is 81 materials, okay? And then when you then go up to a 5 base, you need 34 blocks, and that's 306 materials. A seven base requires one stack and 19 blocks, which is 747 materials. And then this one is a nine base, so that's two stacks and 36 blocks. And that is 1,476 materials. So that means you need 1,476 neverite ingots to make this beacon, which is why it is so goddamn expensive. All right, so you know how to make a valid beacon in the game. So now I'm going to teach you how to actually utilize a beacon. So 
Essentially what a beacon allows you to do is it allows you to apply status effects to within a certain range of the beacon itself. Now, depending on what base you have for the beacon, it will be different amounts. So a free base has a 20 block range and only applies effects for the 11 seconds, okay? Now a five base does 30 blocks for 13 effects or or 13 seconds for the effects, sorry. Um, a seven base is 40 blocks range, but 15 seconds for the effect. And then the largest one, the nine base is 50 blocks range and 17 seconds for the effects, okay? And this is how you activate particular things. So in order to activate a beacon, or activate a certain effect on the beacon, you need to provide a sacrifice material, I like to call it. Now you can use iron, gold, diamond, emerald, or neverite, and it doesn't matter which one you use. It also doesn't matter what blocks you use to create the base in the first place. So if it is a gold beacon, you can use iron. It really does not matter. And you will notice that there are two different power settings on the beacon, okay? And what this actually means is that if you have a 3x3 free free base on the beacon, it will unlock movement speed and haste. Haste being attacking and mining speed. If you have a 5 base, it will unlock damage resistance and jump boost. If you have a 7 base, it will unlock uh, you know, strength or the amount of damage that you can actually deal. And then if you have a nine base, it will unlock an, an additional secondary power. Okay, so if you have a nine base, you can have a primary power and a secondary power on at the same time. Now that is important to note, okay? So as you can see right here, if I wanted to select on this free base right here, I only have these two choices. So I can select movement speed and then select the tick to say that I'm actually ready. Now, as you can see, we are now receiving the speed effect for this particular beacon, okay? Now, if I want to change what effect the beacon is doing, all I need to do is select the other option and then sacrifice another item. So as you will see right here, we are now losing the speed effect and then we have gained the haste effect, as you can see. So that's how that basically works. And if we go to this one right here, which is the nine base beacon, you will see that we now have access to primary and secondary power, okay? Now the secondary power is two choices, okay? You either have regeneration or you double up one of these primary powers. So as you will see right here, um, you can either have it so that you double up a strength or you have a primary power and regeneration, okay? So if we select strength right here and then secondary strength, you will see that when we sacrifice an item, you will see that we have now got strength two as an effect, okay? Now, we have another case where if we want to have regeneration, we can then select another option from here. So if we select damage resistance, for example, and then select confirm, you will see that we now have damage resistance. There we go, it just took a little bit. You can see that we now have damage resistance and regeneration applied and we are now losing the strength to sort of effect. So that's essentially how that works and as long as you remember that each of these tier bases of the beacon unlocks various powers, the beacons are very easy to use. Alright everyone, that's about it for this tutorial. So that's how to make beacons, how to make valid beacons, and how to actually use them in the first place. Hopefully this video was useful so that you can use beacons in your Minecraft world. But if it was useful, then a like and subscribe on the video would be very much appreciated. And make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't notified of any future videos 
on the channel. And be sure to follow my Twitter, which is on screen right now or in the description. But hopefully you will learn something new and you become a better Minecrafter with this tutorial. But thank you for watching, everyone. Hope you have a nice day. Stay happy and healthy as always. And I will see you next time.